Hello and welcome to another short video for the 12 Lead ECG I've Got the Rhythm Facebook group. In this case study, we will be looking at a patient that presented with ACS symptoms and an ECG showing left bundle branch block. Credit for our case study goes to our colleagues in the LAS, Michael Rushton, Olivia Davis and Anthony Richards. So our thanks go to them for sharing. Now let's go to the call details. The ambulance service received a call for an elderly gentleman complaining of central chest pain. Onset of the pain was after gardening with associated symptoms and the past medical history included an MI seven months ago, angina. The patient was known to have left bundle branch block and also suffered with hypertension. The crew obtained a 12 lead ECG and they treated the patient as acute coronary syndrome and said the pain was eased slightly with GTM. They also described that the patient became pale, clammy and looking like ACS and they tried to get him accepted for PCI despite the history of known left bundle branch block. So here we have one of the initial 12 lead ECGs recorded by the crew and we can clearly see it is a left bundle branch block that's correctly interpreted by the computer. How do we know it's left bundle branch block? Well if we look at the QRS complexes in leads V1, V6 and up in lead 1 we can clearly see left bundle branch block morphology. The QRS duration is wide and more than 120 milliseconds. Uh, and we've also got a dominant S wave in lead V1 uh, and absent Q waves in both lead 1 and in lead V6 down here. There's also, if you look, uh, widespread discordant secondary ST T wave changes throughout the ECG. Now, as we already mentioned, this patient was known to have left bundle branch block as his baseline. So where the crew work in London, this currently falls outside of local guidelines for cath lab activation. This did not stop them from trying though, but unfortunately they were unsuccessful in getting the patient accepted for PCI and they had to convey to the local ED instead. The question we now want to explore here is, is it possible to diagnose an MI based on an ECG presenting with left bundle branch block? And that question takes us to Scarbosa criteria. Scarbosa criteria and the more recently validated Smith's modified Scarbosa criteria is used to diagnose patients having an infarction from their ECG where the underlying rhythm is a left bundle branch block. And to meet the criteria requires a score of three points or more. In the picture on the left, five points are scored where there's at least one millimeter of concord and ST elevation in leads with a positive QRS and concordant just means travelling in the same direction. Three points are scored where there's at least one millimetre of concordant ST depression, but that only applies to leads V1 to V3 only. And two points are scored where there's excessive discordant ST elevation in leads with a negative QRS of five millimetres or more. Smith's modified criteria differs in that it requires at least one millimetre of discordant ST elevation is present and it must be at least 25% or a quarter of the height of the S wave in at least one lead and that scores two points. If we look then at our earlier ECG, what do we see if we apply Scarbosa criteria to it? Well firstly we don't see any concordant ST elevation in any leads. Secondly, we don't have at least one millimetre of concordant ST depression in leads V1 to V3. Although V3 is showing some depression of 0.27 millimetres, um, and that's instead of the elevation that we would expect to see with a negative QRS as we have here in V1 and V2. And thirdly, in the leads with a negative QRS, so V1 to V3 again, we don't have any discordant ST elevation of 5 millimetres or more. And in this particular case, it doesn't meet modified, uh, Smith's modified criteria either. Well, the crew demonstrated good clinical practice and performed repeat ECGs whilst the patient was in their care. In this one here, which was about 25 minutes after the last one we looked at, and coincided with the patient becoming pale and clammy, you can clearly see there are some dynamic changes, most notably to lead V3. There is now huge concord and ST depression of over five and a half millimetres in this lead, and that now meets Scarbosa criteria for an acute occlusion. Lead V1 is also coming close to scoring two points with ST elevation of 4.31 millimetres. Based on what we've just discussed then, what are your thoughts now? We know this patient was declined for PCI and the crew conveyed to ED. 
I don't have a final outcome, I'm afraid, but was informed that the hospital were trying to arrange for the cath lab to accept this patient for secondary transfer to their facility. On to some take home points then. So to meet Scarbosa criteria, we need to have three points or more. A is at least one millimetre of concordant ST elevation in at least one lead and gives us five points. B is at least one millimetre of concordant ST depression in at least one of the leads from V1 to the V3 only and scores three. And Scarbosa C is at least five millimetres of discordant ST elevation in at least one lead and scores two. Scarbosa criteria is 90% specific for occlusion in left bundle branch block. And Smith's modified criteria increases the sensitivity for that. The other thing that we need to remember is continuous ECG monitoring is a must in our ACS patients. For those of you with an interest, here's a link to Smith's validation of the modified Scarbosa, which was published in the American Heart Journal. Now all that's left for me to do is to thank Mick, Olivia and Anthony for sharing this case study with us and to thank you all for watching. I hope you found this both interesting and helpful. Goodbye for now.